Hello, my name's Barry McDermott and uh, I'm going to give you my 1 to 13 now. I'm here at Head Inlet while the stadium is just being built up around me and this is the place that built me and put me together. At fullback, there could only be one really. Yestin Harris joined Leeds Rhinos as a, as a young player from Warrington in 1996 and took, took the club by storm. Uh, great captain, great kicker, could score a try from anywhere, had great balance, footwork and uh, a player who, who was inspirational. I've gone for two really talented wingers, two dynamic rugby players. On one wing, I've gone for the Irish wizard, the former Gold Coast and Gateshead wingman, Brian Carney. I could have gone for Martin of Fire, but Brian Carney, for his sheer raw talent, gets the edge. And uh, on the other wing, a Leeds lad, Jason Robinson, who, who was just unbelievable. I played with him at Wigan, played against him as a Leeds player. Uh, and he was just literally like uh, chasing shadows. Left centre would have to be the machine, Keith Senior. Easily the tightest man I've ever come across, but could score tries from 80 metres out, could power over from five metres away from that line and, and set a try up as well. So Keith on the left, over on the right was, was a man that could have been in my fullback spot, but I've given him the right centres position, Gary Connolly. Gary Connolly, 12 or 18 months older than me, but in the big time, pretty much from a 17 year old amateur player playing for St Helens at Wembley, had a shocker at Wembley, dropped a load of high kicks, high bombs, but went on to be probably the, the, the best player in his position, also a phenomenal drinker of, of Lager, Gary Lager in the right centre position. In at standoff is my captain, the most manufactured player I ever played with, but by manufactured I mean the man that worked diligently and tirelessly at his craft, Kevin Sinfield. Met him as a, a 12, 13 year old young water red rugby player. Um, I was at Wigan at the time, he was trialling, decided to come to Leeds and spent his entire career as a Leeds Rhinos player. The best captain, the most inspirational professional, had a basic skill set that he built on when he, when he came into the game, but just became a master and an expert in every facet of the game of rugby league, whether it was kicking off the tee, kicking how, out of hand, knowing when to kick, how to kick, where to kick, passing, running, scoring, uh, tireless, tireless competitor in, in, the, in the training sessions that we did and, and on the training field, was never the fittest, fastest or strongest, but was the bloke that collapsed at the end of everything he had to put his mind and body to. So, Kevin at standoff and at scrum half, I had a few to go at at scrum half because I played with some really good ones. Um, the nasty ones, they tended to tell me what to do a lot. So Ryan Sheridan, Sean Edwards go in that category. Danny Maguire was probably, you know, if you look at six or seven, was a, was a good halfback that I played with. But the one that I think I have the utmost respect for was, was Rob Burrow. And Rob Burrow, fierce competitor, tough as teak, would often give two, three stone away when he were playing against opponents. Sometimes in the middle as a as a seven stroke nine, he, he would get found out, but he'd always knock those knees together and drop those big fellas. So I'd have Rob in my team um, and I'd have him in my toughest team as well. So Rob Burrow at seven. Number eight, I would reluctantly have to put Blockhead O'Connor in. Um, I love playing with Tez because he had a, a great engine, wasn't blessed with pace, didn't have much in terms of skill, but was a determined character and would turn up time after time after time. And one who I could count on to be right on the side if anything ever got a little bit fiery. Uh, again, I had some great hookers and as a front row, you always need a good, a good rapport and a good friendship, a good understanding with your nine for his doggedness, his ruthless edge, you'd have to go with Tez Newton. Um, his skills were second to none. His defence, he was always up quick and he would always, you know, give that communication to me, up with me, and we'd get up and we'd, we'd hunt as a pack and a pair. But, uh, you know, he was just a real tough competitor, a real tough man as well. Had a little bit of the devil in him as well. Didn't mind a, a, didn't mind a scratch, a bite, a pinch or a punch, and uh, I always enjoyed playing with him. The other front rower, the most reliable player I ever played with, Darren Fleary. Had legs like tree trunks, 
but calves like twigs. Darren Fleer who was, was the most reliable, selfless teammate I think I ever played with. In at 11, there's only one 11 for me and, and Moz matured into a great front rower, but I remember him as a young back rower on the edge, running hard, running strong, really uncompromising lines, uh, gained a reputation for being a formidable rugby league player and, and the toughest of the tough. Couldn't fight his way out of a brown paper bag, let me tell you, but it never stopped him from being revered and admired throughout the world. Another bloke that you'd love to have at the side of you. All these players that I'm naming here, I would rather have them here than in front of me on the opposition. The number 12 was one of those players, much like Kevin Sinfield and me loose forward that I'm gonna name, could play at six, seven, could play at 13, or, or in the back row that I'm naming him, and it's Paul Schoolthorpe, another waterhead product, um, a man with, with steel rippling inside of him. What Paul Schoolthorpe could bring to the table was a skill set. He had speed of pace, he had speed of thought, speed of action, but he also he had a bit of dog in him as well, and he could throw a bit of a boxer, fancied himself as a fighter, and, and I, didn't, I didn't see him lose many, so I'd have Scully in, in the back row. The man I'm going to name at loose forward is Andy Farrell, who by far and away was, was for me the best player to have ever played in Super League. He could outthink you, he could outfight you, he could outpace you, he had a great passing game, he could run over the top of you, and he had a nasty habit of drawing me in. As a, as a player, I spent 12 months with Wigan, didn't get it right, came across the Pennines over to, uh, to my spiritual home of Leeds Rhinos and stayed there for 20 years. But, Andy Farrell never let me forget that and reminded me many times in, in games that uh, you know that, that I was a reject from Wigan and I weren't good enough to stay in that Wigan team and it always just lit that fire and, and, and got that, that that inferno blazing so Andy Farrell could could draw players in and, and was a great player. For me the best player to have played Super League in the summer era. I've seen lots of players come close to him, but nobody overtakes Andy Farrell. It's a fantastic team. I think we'd struggle to get it into the salary cap with Sinfield, Schoolthorpe and Farrell, but I'll tell you what, it takes some beating that.